Hey everyone, quick video from our mole lesson. Um, these notes are going to be filled out and this is only going to really be for students that missed one of the most important lessons of the year or if you want to listen to me babble on a little quicker than what I did in class for sure will be in this video. Um, so if you missed the mole class or if you want just a quick review here we go but these notes are filled out already so it's going to be much faster than what's in class so right off the bat starting from the beginning a mole is not this creature that eats my garden and digs holes okay a mole is just a fundamental unit in science and a mole has a really specific meaning it means this number of things so it's a gigantic number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23. It's probably the biggest number you've ever seen and the biggest number you ever will see. It just means that many items. So in Canada, a dozen refers to 12. If you have a dozen eggs, you have 12 eggs. If you have two dozen eggs, you've got 2 times 12, you have 24 eggs. If you have a mole of eggs, you've got this gigantic number of eggs, an unrealistically big number of eggs. So big your brain cannot wrap its head around the size of that number. And we spoke at length about that in class. We have to have a number this big because we're going to be measuring things that are so small and so light like atoms that you need to have such a huge number that you can phys physically weigh out and measure and quantify. So we're not going to be dealing with gigantic things like eggs. We're going to be dealing with unbelievably small things like elements on the periodic table. And that's why this number mole isn't small like 12 or 100. It is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So on the periodic table are a list of elements. And those elements have decimal numbers underneath them. Underneath them. Those are called molar masses. So if you look at oxygen, number 8, it has a molar mass of 16.0, which means if you had one mole of oxygens, if you had 6.02 times 10 to the 23 oxygens, you would have a mass of 16.0. That is how small an oxygen atom is. You need 6.02 times 10 to the 23 individual oxygens to get a mass of 16. So we deal with moles of items. So we say the mass of one mole of oxygen is 16.0 grams per mole. If you have a compound, you've got three elements in it. You need the periodic table. You look up sodium. It has a molar mass of 23.0. Oxygen has a molar mass of 16. And hydrogen has a molar mass of 1. So NaOH has three parts. Its entire mass consists of one sodium, one oxygen, one hydrogen. You add them all up. Paying attention to sig figs, which is one decimal place. Molar masses in chem 11 will always be to one decimal place. Add them all up, you get a molar mass of 40.0. If you had one mole of NaOH, it would weigh 40.0. K2S, there are two Ks and one S. You've got to look up K, 39.1, two of them. Sulfur is 32.1. You just got to look it up on the periodic table. Add them up, you get your molar mass. Okay. So, the brackets, you got two NH4s. You could think of it as two N's or eight H's, however you want to do it. One S and four O's. Add them all up, grams per mole. Notice how there are two units for molar mass, a grams per mole. There are some calculations there, just like we've been doing for the entire school year. We are going to be doing the unit conversions, which are just mole calculations. We want to cancel off specific units. Sometimes you want to end in grams. Sometimes you want to end in moles. We can convert from grams to moles and moles to grams just by using the molar mass. 
So just to walk you for walk you through the first three, I'm not going to do every single one of these. One mole of NaCl is just the mass of Na plus Cl. 23 and 35 and a half gives you 58 and a half. The mass of one mole. If you have three moles, then you have three times 58 and a half. That's all easy math that you can do in your head, but you have to show it on paper, and you have to show the units canceling off. So here is like a really legitimate question. 3.25 moles of CO2 has a specific mass, and you want to find it. So you start with 3.25 moles times line. You have moles at the beginning. You want to put moles at the bottom in your next step, so they cancel off. You want to convert to grams, so you put grams on top. CO2 weighs 12 plus 16 plus 16. That's where the 44.0 comes from. And we converted from moles to grams by canceling off grams. And you could do the exact same steps and cancel off different units, like in number 5. You're starting off with grams, 5.6, times line, put grams on the bottom. Grams is the mass of one mole. Copper plus chlorine plus chlorine. Look the numbers up, add them up, you get 134.5. Grams cancel off, you're left with moles. It's an unbelievably simple unit conversion. We did much more complicated unit conversions back at that learning target in the beginning of the year. And it's solely designed to set you up for this stuff. You are robots now. Whatever unit you start with, times line, that unit goes on the bottom in the next step. Whatever you, unit you want to continue goes on top. So there are three fundamental mole conversions. One of them is in grams, which we just did. The other one is in liters. A mole is a specific number. A mole of gas is a specific number of gases. Gases is affected by temperature and pressure. The greater the pressure, the more condensed that gas will be, the volume will go down. Temperature, if you heat up a gas, they start to vibrate, spin, twist, move around, and expand. So the volume of gas is dependent on temperature and pressure. So we say that there's a standard temperature and pressure. We call it STP. It's a wicked rock band. And STP means 0 degrees Celsius at 1 atmosphere. Every gas on the planet, no matter of the size, if it's 0 degrees outside, right at sea level, one atmosphere, will have a volume of 22.4 liters. So unlike mass, where you need to add things up on the periodic table, no work needs to be done for STP. You can just memorize 22.4 liters is the volume of one mole of any gas. So you can go from moles to liters and liters to moles, like my questions. Whatever you start with goes on the bottom in the next step. And again, you just use 22.4 liters every time you see STP. It's going to be a little different in our gas unit when the temperature is not zero and the pressure is not one, but we'll get to that when we get to that. The next conversion is one you've already done. Um, you may not remember it, but I threw this number in way back at the beginning of the course. We were practicing scientific notation, practicing unit conversions, and I gave you 6.02 times 10 to the 23. All we're doing is converting one unit to another unit. The unit is most likely molecules or atoms, but it could be watermelons, it could be cars, or it can be grandmas. It doesn't matter. Whatever unit you have at the beginning, you put at the bottom in the next step. You want to end in molecules. Molecules is on top. You have to memorize 6.02 times 10 to the 23. And just like STP, no work needs to be done. You just Put that number down every single time molecules or atoms or particles or anything is mentioned in the question. Okay? If you want to convert how many moles from atoms, you're starting with atoms. You put atoms on the bottom in the next step so they cancel off. One mole is 602 to the 23. Divide those numbers and you're done. Take your time. Use your calculator. Scientific notation is not something you're overly comfortable with. So... Use the second function E button, like I talked about in class, 
5.00 second function e or just ee -E, whatever you need to do or just exponent then 17 divided by 6.02 e23 that's the thumbing that you want to start practicing and we're going to be doing it a hundred thousand times in class and you'll you'll get it so there's a grams question there's a liters at stp question and there is a molecules or atoms question okay this is what we did in class as well I can simply ask you for um, the number of atoms in one compound um, we did that back with the molar mass I'm not asking you for atoms in a mole of a compound just if you had one copper sulfate pentahydrate how many oxygen atoms are there if you had one of them well there's one Cu and one S well there's four O's and then there's five waters attached and in five waters there's uh, five oxygens so there's four and then five so there's a total of nine oxygen atoms just playing with words here total atoms you just add everything up one copper one sulfur four oxygens five times two is five H's and five sorry five times two is ten H's and then five oxygens you add all those up it gets to 21 there's some low-level questions these are low-level questions the wording though can be tricky if I wanted a mole of these things then I'd be multiplying it by the mass maybe 6 or 2 to the 23 or liters at STP but I'm not so we'll practice reading the question carefully okay letter B here bare bones super minimal question 4.13 grams of CO2 in to moles so how many moles is 4.13 grams you're starting with grams times line put grams on the bottom you put moles on top because you want to end in moles you need to convert grams the only way to get rid of grams is by using grams so the molar mass of CO2 is 12 plus 16 plus 16 that's where the 44 comes from moles on top divide the numbers and you're done you want to go from moles to molecules well start with moles you put moles on the bottom you put molecules on top you don't need to add anything up memorize the number 602 to the 23 and you're done okay these are the low-level questions these are the most fundamental calculations in this unit these types of conversions of mass to moles liters and moles and molecules and moles will be in every question that we do almost from this point forward so last one before we call it a day on this video liters at STP to moles remember that that compound SO3 doesn't matter it could be really huge it could be small it could be crazy it could be easy like SO2 SO3 it doesn't matter starting with 15.4 liters times line liters gotta go on the bottom you wanna end in moles moles on top and the number you use for liters at STP is 22.4 liters cancel off and you're left with moles done so with that said quick overview of three calculations and we will be expanding this uh, in class later